Hey, welcome back, folks. I knew you were not going anywhere because Erin Quinn is too entertaining and she is too smart. And we're going to get into, uh, folks, the real nitty gritty of the legalities of note investing. So remember, folks, we're buying mortgage notes. This is the debt that is secured by real estate. So owning someone's mortgage, can you imagine that instead of having a rental property? and having a tenant in there and pay you rent every month and deal with all those headaches. You can have a homeowner living in their own house. Don't deal with the landlord headaches, but you're collecting a mortgage payment with interest every month, not rent. You're collecting a mortgage payment with interest every month. And guess what? Guess what interest is for banks, folks? Profit. So if you want monthly cash flow, a secured investment, great yield, this is what we do. We buy people's mortgages. And I always coach people, Aaron. We have the Node Investor University, you know, where we coach people how to become professional node investors. There's a lot to learn, right? Uh, and even as coaches, we don't know it all. That's why we need you. But what I do tell people is this folks, if you bought a performing mortgage note. That means someone's living in a house and they're paying their mortgage payment on time every month and you want to own that rather than a rental property. Well, if you buy one of those mortgage notes, there's really only three major outcomes that can occur. There's a bunch of other extracurricular stuff we can get into and I'm sure Aaron will help me expound upon this stuff. But guys, they'll either pay you as agreed and that means they're just going to pay their mortgage payment on time every month for the next 20 years until their house is paid off. So you'd be collecting monthly cash flow passively for 20 years with a great yield, not a bad thing, right? People understand that. Eventually the mortgage will pay itself off and that they will take ownership of their home. That's how mortgage loans work, right? The other one is most people don't stay in their house, the same house for 20 years. A lot of people move. I think the average uh, time in a home in, in, in the United States now is about maybe seven to nine years. And so maybe- okay. Yeah, maybe they sell the house. Maybe they sell the house and they move to Florida, right? You always hear that a lot. Or maybe they just refinance with a new bank or whatever it is. In that second scenario, you as the owner of that debt would be paid off the the balance of what they owe you, right? And so since we buy these notes at a bit of a discount, that looks good too, right? So someone could pay you as agreed forever until their loan pays off. They could sell the house or refinance and you get what's called early payoff and you get all the money you were owed up front at that time. But the third thing that most of our students get concerned with, Aaron, which is most of the time why we always call you is, yep. well, what if somebody who's living in the house decides to stop paying their mortgage and now you own that loan and there's no payments coming in and mm -hmm. goodness gracious, what do we do then? And that's like usually the fear factor, right? And yep. so that's why I brought you on today. We're going to talk about a little bit about uh, that fear factor. Is it really that scary? I mean, if you buy right and the numbers are right, you just have to go through a process, right? There's a litigious process you must go through called a foreclosure. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That is correct. And in what states do you help people when they, when they need some help uh, from a wonderful attorney like you and they need your help? in what states can you offer your help in? So my firm is, um, I'm licensed in Florida and Georgia. So those are my two states. And then my partner is licensed in Massachusetts. So the three states that we uh, do foreclosure and bankruptcy and any kind of other ancillary real estate matters are those three for Florida, Georgia, Massachusetts. Yep. Yep. So guys, you know, we, we own assets in these States and uh, whenever we have an issue, who do we call Aaron Quinn? No doubt. Right. But you know, here's the deal. Like why, you know, I, I understand sometimes a newer note investor maybe um, has a fear of that. Right. I mean, that could be the scariest thing is somebody stops paying you and, and you have to go through this huge process and there's legal involved and, oh my God, I don't like those lawyer people. And, uh, you know, people have <laughs> these kind of things. Now it, it's exactly the opposite, isn't it? I mean, can you give us an idea of like what a process looks like, whether it's in Florida or Georgia where you specialize, but States differ guys. So we're going to maybe give some blanket statements here. And you always want to check if you're talking about a different state besides Florida and Georgia, which those two states also differ. But you always want to make sure that you're getting legal counsel advice that are in the communities and in the state in which you have the asset. But when we're talking about, like, let's say Florida and Georgia, even those two states you specialize in have their fair share of differences and you can't They're operate the same different. It's insanely Absolutely. different. So let's talk a little bit about it, right? Florida, boy, the mass exodus, all of us Californians, everybody from all over I going, know. To going to Florida. So let's talk about Florida. What's up with Florida? If, if I own a mortgage note in Florida. Florida being awesome. 
Yeah. Well, besides it being awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but if somebody, if I own a mortgage note and somebody stops paying there, right. There's gotta be a certain timeline. There's gotta be a certain procedure. I've got to be looking at a ton of extra costs, or I'm going to have to start writing Aaron Quinn some checks. Right. But how does the time frame look in, in Florida, the cost, what's the process and how, how easy or nasty really is it? So, you know, Florida, number one, you know, as far as people getting concerned about just you know, having to go to legal in general when something like this happens. I think the scary part for most people is the financial piece of it more so than the time frames and stuff like that. And, you know, to be honest, like as far as attorneys are concerned, you're going to get your fair share of, you know, differences. And the best thing to do is kind of get an idea up front before you even get into, or, or if it were me getting into this industry, I would look first at, you know, what are those options up front? So I at least know about them and know like roughly what they're going to cost because ultimately that's the, the unknown is what is where the fear comes from. So, um, Florida in general has, so the default industry, just so most people understand, um, generally really keeps costs and fees down because, um, what we, handle as far as lawyers are concerned on the default side is we deal with repeat clients with multiple properties with multiple notes and mortgages you know and they are recurring clients you know on the regular versus in a personal injury case for instance you're not going to have you know that recurring aspect of things right so the industry is kind of corrected or it, it at least uh, the guidelines are set by Fannie and Freddie usually, and they kind of give you roughly what the, the right numbers are for a foreclosure in, um, in each state. So in Florida specifically, the Fannie Mae matrix that was uh, just put out in December uh, pays basically the pays $4,750 to the attorney for a flat basis for the entire case. And that is paid pro rata in milestones, a few milestones per case. So each time you kind of have like a step, you know, step one is this payment. Step two is this payment. So you can pay as you go um, with, but it is very front heavy. So that's something to remember. And that's just on the fees piece. So that's just what you pay the attorney to draft the documents, go to court, hold the auction, deal with the funds, all those kinds of things. Um, then you've got your cost aspect. So Florida in general, the clerks and the, and the government decided to kind of, they realized that foreclosure can be a cash cow in Florida, I think. <laughs> and so our fees, our filing fees that used to be, you know, 400 bucks per file period now have a graduated filing fee system where um, if the loan is 50,000 or less, it's that $405, right? Which mm -hmm. Let's just face it, you're probably not finding a $50,000 house in Florida. Um, but then the next is up to $250. And so $50 to $250 is a $905 filing fee. And then above $250 is $1905. So that graduated system can can make your, you know, your um your fees increase significantly. And really, Florida is a lot 50% fees, 50% costs on an uncontested basis. So when I'm running through the, or talking about this number, this 4750, that's run of the mill, only uncontested, nothing crazy happens, no defensive pleadings, uh, no needing to contest the foreclosure case. So you're probably looking at, you know, roughly a thousand to 2000 for that filing fee or what most of them are going to cost. And I would say in general, given service of process and like on all the ancillary fees that you have with a court case, you're probably looking at roughly 3000 to 4,000 in costs. Um, so it is not cheap. <laughs> uh, but that said, all of those fees are recoverable. So once you, if you have equity in the property and you have enough to cover your mortgage, you're getting reimbursed that money. You're just going to have to front it until it's time. So I, that's your Florida. So Georgia on the other side is cheap as hell. Ooh, am I allowed to swear? I don't know if I'm allowed to swear. Beep. Beep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Florida or Georgia is cheaper. It's uh 1900 for the, the attorney fees. And again, prorated fees. You have, you know, two or three, I think it's three milestones in, in Georgia. And then um, you've got your costs. So your costs are publication, a title search, you're maybe looking at a grant and cost. So those are much cheaper, um, but they're a non-judicial state. So that's why you don't have to go to court. You don't have to serve process, you know, actually physically serve people at the door. You don't have to um, find those people 
and you don't have to draft a big complaint. You draft a couple documents and you send it out. And unless the borrower comes in and really contests the case, it goes forward without a hitch and you don't have to worry about any of it. So I was here in like seven to 8,000 bucks in Florida. If you need to go through a foreclosure uh, with a, with a borrower, does that sound about right? Yeah, that's, that's probably accurate. Yeah. And, you know, to be honest and, and kind of just to give people a historical perspective of that, cause I hear a lot of like, we pay you attorneys so much money. Right. So <laughs> in 2002, when I started in the industry, the fee was $1,200. And in 2007, mm. I think, um, when I graduated law school, the fee was $1,300. So over a five-year period, we got a hundred dollar raise. And the one thing that I can't, you know, I, I, the firm that I went to at during law school and, and worked at for, you know, several years after law school, the, the owner of that firm was a big lobbyist of, you know, you need to give your attorneys a raise, like you're expecting too much. Uh, and the other thing too, is regulatory, you know, regulation wise, we got the CFPB, the Dodd-Frank Act, all these acts and all these different things that were making the attorneys do much more than that base $1,200 action that they were doing in 12 and 2002. So really we've, you know, gained probably, and, and even then like that 1700 or that, um, $1,200 was that way for a long time. So I think that, you know, even though we've tripled or, you know, quadrupled the fees, you know, since that point in time, um, you know, it really, to me, I almost feel like it's still a really good deal in Florida to, to foreclose for $5,000 when, uh, at least on the fee side, because you're talking about overhead and, you know, the amount of hours and the cases are roughly in an uncontested case, you're looking at six months to a year. Uh, to get it all the way through the case. So you're take you're getting a six months to a year of time of the attorney's time and answering your questions and handling your matter and you're getting the house back and it's going to cost you, you know, five grand over that period of time for yeah, the actual yeah. And, and you get, you know, guys, what we teach at the NIU Node Investor University is, is this exact thing. You know, when, when you're doing due diligence prior to the purchase, you better have this stuff in there and say, hey, what if they stop paying. What's that going to look like financially and time-wise for my investment? We're going to get more into the depths of this conversation with Aaron Quinn from Quinn Legal right when we come back from these wonderful messages from our sponsors. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be back in a minute. 